In this lesson we're going to look at changes of state in the context of enthalpy changes. So you can see in front of you the three states of matter. We've got the solid and the left, neat rows and columns. Atoms closely packed together held by strong forces. In the middle we've got the liquid. Uh, atoms still quite closely packed together but able to move around freely held together by weaker forces. And then we've got the gas where the atoms or particles are much further apart and they're moving with a whole range of different speeds and in random directions. Now, we're not actually getting into the behavior of the particles in each of these three cases at the moment. What we're just looking at is defining the energy changes involved. And uh, so the four changes of state which can occur is from a solid to a liquid. Okay, we call that melting. And then from the liquid to the gas state, you remember that that is known as evaporation. And then going in reverse from the gas state back into the liquid, that is called condensation. And finally, from the liquid back into a solid state, well, we call that solidification or solidifying. So first of all, looking at melting, what's going on in terms of changes of enthalpy or changes of heat or heat changes in this particular case well as you know that the particles are vibrating around with a whole range of different speeds and vibrations but in order for the solid to change into a liquid these particles need to escape from the solid state okay they need to break away and to do that they need to absorb energy Okay, as they absorb more and more energy, they move faster, and then they start to break away into the solid state. So we can say that while melting is going on, heat is being absorbed. And this is really what we're looking at here. What's happening to the change of enthalpy? Well, we say because heat is being absorbed, then the enthalpy change taking place in melting is positive. Okay? And therefore, we call this an endothermic process. So melting is endothermic, heat is absorbed. So this is really what we're looking at in this unit. We're applying the changes in enthalpy vocabulary to the various changes of state. Likewise then with the liquid state, okay, we're assuming now all the particles are in the liquid state. They're moving around in random directions and a variety of speeds slowly in order for those particles to escape into the gas state then they need also to absorb energy they need to acquire more and more energy they move faster and faster and then eventually particles will acquire enough energy to break away from the liquid state move into the gas state all right so again the same thing is happening with evaporation that heat is being absorbed heat needs to be absorbed for evaporation to take place which means that the change in enthalpy is positive again Evaporation is an endothermic process. That's to say, heat is absorbed from the surroundings. A classic example which demonstrates the endothermic nature of evaporation, which you're all very familiar with, happens, you know, you've all been to the seaside and you've all jumped in the sea. And, uh, you know, when you get out of the sea, you know, you're wet, basically. And even though it's a hot day, you feel cold. So, you know, you're covered in water. Let's draw some water there on his arm, right? Like that. And even though the sun's shining, you still feel cold after a while. Why? Because what's happening to this water is it starts to evaporate. And where is the heat coming from in order for the water to evaporate off of the boy's arm? Well, it's coming from his body, all right? So heat is being absorbed from the body of the boy in order to help that water evaporate. That means that his body temperature near the surface will start to drop. Okay, so what's happening is that the water is absorbing heat as it evaporates and the heat is supplied from the boy's body, which makes you feel cold. Okay, so going back the other way from the vapor state back to the liquid state, we call that condensation. In order for these particles to return to the liquid state, they need to lose energy. All right, so they've got to give energy out. They've got to give heat out. Okay, so heat needs to be released from the gas, and that means that the change of enthalpy is negative, which makes this an exothermic change.
These aren't really reactions, they are physical changes. So melting is an endothermic change, evaporation an endothermic change, condensation an exothermic change, and likewise to solidify, the liquid needs to lose energy, it needs to give energy out. So energy is released and delta H is negative. And again, we write exothermic for solidifying. Another example which demonstrates this exothermic nature, this need to release heat in order to change from the liquid to the solid state. Well, if you take a couple of beakers of water and put those in the freezing compartment of the fridge, right, what's going to happen is the water is going to freeze. It's going to solidify. In order to do that, the water particles need to lose heat and so heat will be lost so you say well where does the heat go well, actually in a fridge the heat comes out from the back of the fridge let's have a look okay so in order for the water that you've just placed in the freezing compartment to be changed to ice heat needs to be lost from the water molecules okay, so we're going to lose heat this is therefore an exothermic reaction so what's going on here at the back of the fridge what these black painted tubes are doing is that they're helping to remove that heat from the fridge. You'll notice that a lot of warmth comes from behind the back of the fridge and that heat is effectively being extracted from the contents of the fridge. Okay so this process in which water solidifies into ice is an exothermic process. Heat is lost, that heat needs to be lost and it's lost through the back of the fridge through these cooling fins through this cooling apparatus.